What's going on guys, Matthew Monas here, and this is the Dell G7 series gaming laptop. This is a budget to mid-tier gaming laptop that replaces last year's Dell Inspiron 15 7000 line. The best part about it, it has a better name, the G7, which makes the SKUs a lot less confusing. But is it worth it? Let's find out. The design is pretty familiar compared to last year's Inspiron line, but the biggest difference this year is you get a nice alpine white with blue accent colors. Now depending on the light and the angle that you're looking at it, it looks blue, but if you get really close to it, it also shines purple. The same thing with the deck, you have a black deck with blue accents surrounding the device. I like this. This is a nice change from the typical black and red laptops that we're used to seeing. Now when it comes to portability, I definitely wouldn't want to be carrying this in my knapsack 24 hours a day around campus, but it's more than fine to take to a friend's house, to a coffee shop, as long as you know you're going short distances. In terms of competition, it sits on the heavier side. It's lighter than the Acer Predator Helios 300, but heavier than the Lenovo Y530. For ports on the left hand side, you have your Nobelock, a barrel connector, an RJ45 Ethernet port, a USB 3.0 port, and a full size SD card slot. On the right hand side, you have a full size HDMI port, two more USB 3.0 ports, an audio jack, and a USB Type C Thunderbolt 3 port. That means down the road, for whatever reason, let's say the 1060 inside of here gets a little too slow, you can hook up an external GPU and really extend the life of this laptop. That's something you can't do on the Acer Predator Helios 300 and the Lenovo Y530. So getting inside is super easy. There's just one screw to remove and you're in. Everything is pretty much upgradable except for the CPU and GPU. Now, you can swap out the 2.5 inch one terabyte hard drive. If you want a faster drive down the road, you can pop in an SSD. Though M2 SSD just above it gives you decent read and write speeds. You have two slots for your RAM, which can be configured up to 32 gigabytes. And you have a 56 watt hour battery, which will give you better battery life than the Lenovo Y530 or Acer Predator Helios 300. I was getting about four and a half to five hours of use before needing to charge. And that's because the battery size is bigger than the two I just mentioned. The display is 15 inches, it's IPS, it's matte, and it's 60 hertz. If you want to use this for content creation, you're going to have to look at other laptops or hook it up to an external monitor. The color accuracy and brightness of this panel is just not that great. It's fine for gaming, but it's not great for content creation. Also, there's two different panels going around. You might get lucky and get the AUO version, or you might get the LG version. In terms of color accuracy, it's pretty much on par. It's just if you get the AUO version, you can overclock it to 144 hertz. Now, if you do do this, just note if anything goes wrong, Dell won't honor the warranty. So just above, we have the 720p potato camera. It's not that great, at least it's positioned well. If you ever want to see what you look like from a 1980s TV, the webcam from this laptop will give you a great idea. So sound is coming out of two speakers on the front of the laptop. This is a much better position than having them underneath it. In terms of sound quality, it's pretty good. The highs were nice and crisp with good mids. The bass is not too bad. In fact, I found these speakers got louder than the Lenovo Y530 and the Helios 300. The keyboard is full size. I love the fact there's a numeric keypad there in case you need to crunch some numbers. But in terms of typing and gaming, I do find the Helios 300 and Lenovo Y530 have a better gaming keyboard to game on. Now this one's not terrible, it just feels like an XPS 15th keyboard with slightly more travel distance. Touchpad, nice and big, lots of space to move around, it's using Windows Precision drivers, and it's not bad for a gaming laptop. Performance is fantastic on this laptop. It's using the new 8th gen i7 8750H processors. These are six core processors which are capable of doing things like gaming and streaming at the same time, and even more perfect for content creation like editing videos. Now this one does have a 1060 Max-Q GPU, which is slightly weaker than a regular 1060, but more powerful than a 1050 Ti. I actually like this combination as I find it offers a sweet spot for gaming. You can still game at full HD with settings set to high and you can play most modern titles comfortably. But the reason why it's so special is because when it comes to thermal output, it just does a much better job than the 1060 in the Helios 300. It doesn't really thermal throttle and if it does, it's only for a few seconds. And even the heat output itself is not that significant. When this thing is under full load, the fans are not that loud, which is great. If I was to put the Helios 300 on full load, it sounds like a jet is taking off. 
The surface temperatures were also great. It stayed below 50, so it's not too hot to the touch. And when it's idle, you don't really hear the laptop. So here are my closing thoughts. I really dig the new design of the Dell G7. I love the fact that you now have a white option, getting away from that typical black and red gaming look. The only thing I don't like about this laptop is the color accuracy. I do wish it had a better display. Now I am gonna be comparing this to the Lenovo Y530 and the Helios 300 in an upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe for that. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be giving away a Dell Precision down the road and you don't wanna miss that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.